once dwelt in a town in Persia, a poor woodcutter called Ali Baba. Every day he would go into the forest to cut wood, load it on his donkeys, and bring it back into town to be sold. One day, when Ali Baba was in the forest, he saw a crowd of horsemen approaching. Afraid that they might be robbers, he hid his donkeys and climbed into a tree for safety. The horsemen stopped near Ali's hiding place, and he counted 40 men. As he watched, the man, who was obviously the captain, went up to a large rock and shouted the words, Open Sesame! At once, a large door opened in the rock. The captain then made all his men enter the door first. Then he went in himself, and the door closed behind him. Ali Baba didn't dare move until after the men came through the door again and were out of sight on their horses. Then, and only then, did he come down from the tree. Full of curiosity, he went up to the rock and in his turn shouted the words, Open Sesame! Instantly, the door stood open again. Inside was a large and well-lighted cave. Stacked on the floor were all sorts of provisions, rich bales of silks, valuable carpets, silver and gold and jewels in abundance. Ali Baba had no doubt now that the men he had seen were robbers and that he had stumbled upon their secret hiding place and treasure house. Loading his donkeys with bags of gold and covering all with the wood he'd cut so that once back in the town all would appear as usual, he started off for home. Once inside his house, he quickly locked the door and called out to his wife, Look, look what wealth I found! and emptied the bags of gold in a heap on the floor. His wife, poor woman, could hardly believe her eyes. Down on her knees she stumbled and began to count the gold piece by piece. Wife, he cried, we'll never be finished if you try to count it all. Better help me dig a hole in the floor and hide it, lest the robbers come and take it all back from us. Here, take a spade, we have no time to lose. But Ali Baba's wife was too excited at her new riches. But we should know how much we have, she answered. You dig the hole, and I'll run to your brother's house and borrow a brass cup. With that, we will at least be able to measure the gold as we bury it. Knowing of their poverty, the rich sister-in-law became very curious to see what sort of grain this was that Ali Baba's wife could have to measure. So, before she gave her the brass cup, she rubbed a little honey on the inside, so that whatever was measured, a little would stick there. Sure enough, when the cup was returned, a piece of gold was stuck there. What? cried the rich sister-in-law. Does Ali Baba have so much gold that he must needs measure it by the cup? And when her husband, Kasim, came home, she told him all about it. He too was so envious that he tossed and turned and couldn't sleep for thinking of it. And at last, made up his mind to get up very early the next day and go and see his brother. Ali Baba saw that he had no choice and told his brother all he asked, even the magic word that would open the door of the robber's cave. The next day, Cassim arose long before the sun and set out for the forest. He took with him ten mules, each bearing a great chest which he planned to fill with the treasure. Reaching the rock, he shouted, Open, Sesame! And at once the door opened, just as Ali Baba had said it would. He went in, and the door closed behind him. Quickly he piled bags of gold and jewels near the door. But his head had been so full of what he would do with all the treasure, that when he was ready to go, he couldn't think of the magic word that would open the door again to let him out. Open, Bali, he cried, but was amazed to find the door remained shut. Open, Rice! Open, Maize! Open, Wheat! But still the door wouldn't open. Now it so happened that the robbers were returning to the cave. Cassim could hear them coming, and when they opened the door, he rushed up, trying to get out. But the robbers poured in 
and with their scimitars soon made an end of him. Cassim's wife sat waiting for him until nearly midnight, but when he didn't come, she told Ali Baba he was missing. Ali guessed what had happened and immediately set off for the cave, and there he found his dead brother. He took another load of treasure on his donkeys, then, bearing his brother's body with him, he brought them all safely home. But he knew that before the night was up, he must bury his dead brother. He needed help. And since he could trust no one who knew him, he asked Morgiana, a clever slave girl in his brother's household, to bring someone from another part of the city. I will pay him well for this night's work, he told her, but... Be sure it is someone who does not know us. He must be blindfolded on his way here and blindfolded on his return so that he won't be able to tell anyone where he's been. Morgiana set out at once and in due time returned with a poor shoemaker blindfolded from the other end of the city and he and Ali together buried Cassim. When this was done, the shoemaker was again blindfolded and led back to his home. Ali Baba now felt safe with his treasure at last. But when the robbers again returned to the cave and found that the body of the intruder had been removed, they knew beyond doubt that someone else must know the secret of the rocky door. If we do not find out who this person is, said the captain, we shall surely lose all. There is only one way to find out. One of us must go into the town alone and see if he can spy out this person's whereabouts. One of the robbers volunteered for the task, and for a full day he wandered up and down the town, but he learned nothing. He came at last to the bazaar where the shoemaker was working away in his stall but his head kept drooping over his work as if he would sleep. The robber fell into conversation with him, and when he inquired why it was the shoemaker was so tired and almost slept as he worked, the shoemaker told him how he had been up all the night, how he'd been blindfolded and led to a house unknown, and how he had helped to dig a grave and bury a man. On hearing this, the robber offered him a large reward if he would be blindfolded once more and try to retrace his steps. The shoemaker agreed, and facing the direction in which he had first been led, they set out. It was here, cried the shoemaker suddenly, that I turned first. So they turned, and the robber led him further along the way. And it was here, cried the shoemaker again, where I feel the soft earth under my feet, that I turned a second time. Then I went on till I, till I came to a flight of seven steps. And in this manner, even though blindfolded, the shoemaker, bit by bit, was able to retrace his steps and arrive at last at Ali Baba's door. The robber was overjoyed at this success and dismissed the shoemaker with an even larger reward than he'd promised. Then... To make sure he remembered the house, he put a mark on the door with a red chalk. That done, he raced back to tell the captain and the other robbers in the forest how he had found the house of the man who knew the secret of the cave. It would seem that this would be the end of Ali Baba. But it so happened that soon after the robber had departed for the forest, Morgiana came to Ali's house on an errand for her mistress and noticed the red mark on the door. At this, she became very suspicious. Someone intends Ali Baba no good with this, she decided. And finding a piece of chalk of the same color, she proceeded to mark all the doors in the street with the same sign, so that when the robbers came next day to revenge themselves upon Ali Baba, it was impossible for them to decide which was the right house. They returned furious to the forest, and in their anger slew the robber who they thought had so misled them. But the robber captain couldn't rest. The captain called for another volunteer, but now no one else would go. So 
he decided to go himself and find the right house. Now the captain was wily. Instead of marking it with chalk, he walked up and down in front of the house for a long time so that he could remember it. Then he went back to the forest and made his plans. In two days, everything was ready. Nineteen mules were loaded with large, empty oil jars. Two jars to each mule. And a robber was hidden in thirty-seven of them. But the thirty-eighth jar was filled with oil in case he should be stopped at the town gate. The captain could then open that jar and show the oil and say he was an oil merchant come to trade in the bazaar. Toward evening that same day, the robber captain led his train of mules into the town, passing unchallenged through the gates. On coming to the house of Ali Baba, he found the woodcutter outside the door, getting a breath of air before dinner. He stopped his mules and asked for lodging for the night. Ali Baba agreed and hospitably invited him in to dine, while the mules and their burdens were led into the courtyard. Well, it certainly did seem that this time the robbers would succeed. But again it was Morgiana who spoiled his plan. It was her duty to get up each morning long before dawn and prepare food for her mistress' breakfast. And this morning, as she worked at her task, her lamp went out. There was no more oil in the house, nor was there a single candle. So her mistress suggested she run over to Ali Baba's house and get some of the oil from one of the jars of the merchant who was stopping there. Morgiana did this, but when she came near the first jar, she heard a voice within the jar whisper, Is it time? Startled as she was, the clever Morgiana instantly understood what was happening, and instead of crying out or calling for help, she went from jar to jar in Ali Baba's courtyard, and as each robber asked, Is it time? She answered each one, Not yet, but presently. At last she came to the jar with the oil. There she filled her lamp and hurried home with it. Soon enough she came back with a large kettle, and going again to the oil jar, filled it to the brim. She had made a wood fire ready, and on this she set the kettle. When the oil was boiling hot, she poured a ladleful into every jar, and so destroyed the robber within. Soon after, the robber captain awoke. When he found the whole of his robber band dead, he quickly mounted his mule and hurriedly tried to leave. But Morgiana played one last trick on him. Catching at the mule's bridle as he tried to pass through the gate, she reminded the robber captain that in his hurry he had forgotten to take his jars of oil with him. So he had to return and was forced to load the jars with the dead robbers inside onto his mules. Then he departed and was never heard of again. With the riches of the cave now free for his taking, Ali Baba counted himself well off indeed. So grateful was he to Morgiana that he purchased her from his sister-in-law and then freed her from slavery so that she might marry his son. And with them he lived wisely and prosperously to a ripe old age.